。では、データでグリーンウォッシュと戦う社会及び環境の持続可能性から企業を評価するということで、ベターワールドショッパー代表のオリクロス大学、えー、エリス・ジョーンズ博士にお話を伺ってみたいと思います。えー、まずはじめに、えー、ジョーンズ博士の自身のですね、紹介、えー、そして、えー、ベターワールドショッパーの、えー、組織の紹介を取り組みも含めて、えー、お聞かせください。えー、特に、えー、現在アメリカコロナの新型コロナの感染で、えー、大変な危機に陥っていると聞いております。その辺の状況も含めて、えー、よろしくお願いいたします。I'm Ellis Jones. I am a professor of sociology at College of the Holy Cross. My specialty areas specifically include subjects like media and television, studying corporations, studying sustainability. And in particular, ethical consumerism. Ethical consumerism is really what brought me to founding 15 years ago, maybe 20, this project called Better World Shopper that are dedicated to helping consumers figure out effective ways to spend their dollars. Uh, or their euros, or their yen, or their pounds, so that corporations that are behaving in a sustainable manner, that are respecting human rights, are supported by consumers. Now, the reason I think that this kind of ethical consumerism is important is because, in a broader sense, Power is shifting away from the political sphere where nation states are traditionally thought to hold power and into the economic sphere where corporations hold power. This is what ethical consumerism is for. It is essentially an attempt to bring democracy to the economy, to allow people to take the practices that we consider normal. In our political system and apply them in the same way to our economic system. Now, my own system in the US, which is the only system currently available in the US, rates companies on five major areas social justice, environmental sustainability, human rights, animal protection, and community involvement. And there are so many issues under each of those that are covered. I look back 30 years for data, all of the publicly available data that we have, and I synthesize it into a database that takes all of these, for in my case, 75 or more major sources of data, and weights and analyzes that data and translates it into something simple for consumers to use. Now, As far as COVID 19 is concerned, arguably the US is really the country in which we have the most infections in the world.、Uh, we have one of the highest、uh, rates of infection.、Uh, in a sense,、uh, our country has failed,、uh, in large part due to a failure of leadership. And、um, yet, I think there are some really important lessons to be learned for ethical consumerism through this. Because what has led us in this country to those failures is essentially the same things that we are talking about in ethical consumerism. Here in the US, one of the major problems is that the US public is vulnerable. They are vulnerable to. Misinformation. In fact, there has been such a mixing in the news media in the US of fact and fiction, fantasy and reality, that I would argue most、uh, citizens cannot tell the difference between、um, a thoughtful news source 
and the fake news source. And so they don't know who to trust. And they are um, vulnerable to these types of misdirection because they lack the ability to understand and see uh, where the facts are, where the truth lies, and where the science and evidence would otherwise bring us so that we can more effectively combat the pandemic. ぜひあのジョンズ博士にお聞きしたいのはこの新型コロナの影響の中で例えば消費行動がですねこれからどういうふうに変わらなきゃいけないのかでそして、えー、人権で次にはそのライフスタイルですね私たち消費者のこれをエシカルなライフスタイルに変えていくにはどうしたらいいのか、えー、持続可能性を実現するためにはどういうふうに変えていかないといけないのか、えー、ご提案があったら伺いたいそして最後に重要なポイントは政治と経済の問題を、えー、おっしゃいました私たちは社会の一員として今後ポストコロナということを考えた時にどういうふうにしなきゃいけないのか、えー、ご専門の立場からもアドバイスをいただければと思います。The connection for me between... COVID 19 and ethical consumerism, the direct connection is this issue of greenwashing. And just as people struggle in this country, in the US, to figure out the truth from、um, fiction,、uh, ethical consumers, when they are searching for the truth about what companies are doing,、uh, they also、uh, run into something very specific called greenwashing. And this greenwashing Means that most companies are saying to consumers that they are doing wonderful things for the environment and for human rights, when in fact there is a wide variety of ways in which、uh, companies are dealing with these issues. Now, so this connection with the pandemic really stems from the ability for consumers or citizens in every country to figure out the difference between、um, what is. Uh, the truth, or what are facts, and what is fiction, or what is、uh, being hidden. And once we have that information, then we can effectively be ethical consumers, then we can effectively fight this pandemic. Now, let me start by talking about, I think, some specific lessons that we can learn as ethical consumers from COVID 19, and then talk about these broader lessons. First, I think what we're seeing as ethical consumers is that in this pandemic, particularly in the US,、uh, we are losing small companies. It is estimated that we will lose by the end of this somewhere between 10 and 30% of all of our small companies. And this is really tragic because when I think about a thriving economy, I think a thriving economy is like an ecosystem. It must have biodiversity for it to survive in the long term. It must have creatures at every level. You need top level predators, and you need mid level creatures, and you need creatures at the bottom, and they all interact in a kind of food web、uh, or network. If we lose all of our small businesses, we lose an essential part of our economy. Small companies are much more likely to be creative and innovative.、Uh, they allow, they employ most of the people in the US. They also allow people to start、uh, companies of their own、uh, from nothing. And so they really are a kind of heart of democracy in our economic sphere. So to lose them, Is quite tragic, and I think it's allowing us to see how important these small businesses are and how, as ethical, ethical consumers, what we need to do is figure out more ways to directly support those small businesses. This has become a higher priority than it would be otherwise. That we need to understand the importance of supporting all of the small companies much more so than before. The second lesson I think that we are learning is these 
dollars, which used to go to the small businesses, have been shifted over to very large businesses. And what it reveals is that uh, we have a kind of monopoly, which reveals another problem within our economic system, which is a kind of monopoly. And monopolies in general are essentially poison to capitalism. So if you believe in capitalism, you also need to understand that it's essential to have competition. And so in any case, when you have a single company that dominates a whole sphere, uh, you understand that uh, the system is dysfunctional. So what we need to do is begin to discover and build and create more responsible alternatives, more ethical alternatives. The third, and one of perhaps the most important lessons that is becoming clear, is that there are very specific groups of people who are being most drastically hurt by this pandemic. The elderly, the poor, working class, and people of color, they are dying, they are losing their jobs, they are being evicted from their homes in this country, they are losing their health care. And so I think one of the other lessons we have to circle back to is that something we've been trying to learn, I think, for at least two or three decades in ethical consumerism, and that is to understand that, yes, ethical consumerism is about sustainability and the environment, but it is about more than that, it's also about the human beings. And we have to be able to combine those two things, the environment or the environmental aspects and the human or the social aspects. And then we have the sustainable equation for ethical consumerism. So we need to find more ways, whether it's through fair trade or through other mechanisms to directly impact and support these people who are being most directly affected uh, above everyone else. I think one of the wonderful things about ethical consumerism is its ability to scale up from the individual to larger institutions so that it's not limited to individuals. In fact, uh, schools can become ethical consumers. Other companies and businesses can become ethical consumers. Governments, local and state and federal governments can become more ethical or religious institutions. All of these institutions have connections, economic connections and supply chains. And they can examine those and make more ethical choices and begin to multiply the effects of ethical consumerism across the system. So I think it's important to understand, uh, just like with this pandemic, we cannot solve the pandemic as individuals. Yes, it is important for us to each take responsibility and for all of us as individuals to stay home or wear masks, etc. But it's not enough. To defeat this pandemic, we need all of us to behave responsibly at every level. Very much like ethical consumerism, for it to function, you need it to happen at all of these levels. And then you'll see the power of ethical consumerism. Uh, they need those good sources of information. With this pandemic, we will get through it. And that solution is cooperation. If there is any good news, is that once we have the cooperation that we need to defeat this pandemic at all of those levels, it is only combated effectively through science and facts and data. Once we have that structure in place, that social infrastructure, then we can arguably move on to even more important issues. Uh, we are in the pandemic, it seems like the number one problem that we have, but in fact, I think we face a larger problem collectively on this planet. And that infrastructure, I think, will be laid now for us to combat global warming. エシカルな消費行動だと
こういうことが大変感銘を受けました。企業の多様性を守らないと、アマゾンのような独占がどんどん大きくなってしまう。でそ,うそうすると、その大企業が逆に経済の民主主義の基本をですね、どんどん壊してしまっている。ある意味で、もう一つの経済のパンデミックを起こすんではないのかという危惧感があるような感じがします。まさにこういう状況の中でジョーンズ博士が言われた傷つきやすいのは一体誰なのかという視点を私たちがいつも持つことが必要だというお話だったと思うんです。経済の多様性はこのコロナ危機によって大きく変わろうとしています。でも片一方で生態学的な影響に大きな影響を及ぼしているこの気候危機、気候変動。これがある意味でコロナの問題を起こしているんだろうと思います。えー、私たちはジョンズ博士に伺いたいのは気候危機の回避のためにエシカル消費は本当に貢献できるのかどうなのか、その辺のご意見を伺いたいと思います。I think that, first of all, again, specifically in ethical consumerism, ethical consumerism does engage global warming specifically. So it looks at how companies track and reduce their own CO2 emissions so that consumers can then reward those companies that are doing a good job of that because they are helping all of us do better at thinking about how we keep track of and reduce. Uh, these causes for global warming, so we begin to mitigate those effects. However, I think, in a larger sense, what ethical consumerism offers us is a way to practice engaging massive problems at each level. How does my diet impact global warming? How does my transportation impact global warming? How does my energy consumption impact global warming? So, as individuals, we have to do that, but that's not enough. I want you to see that this ethical consumerism and fighting the pandemic and global warming are essentially all using the same framework. It is, a, it is practicing the same framework over and over again. We have to take it as individuals and we have to bring it to the workplace. And then we have to, that is essentially what I would call the social infrastructure that we need to be able to engage these problems, which are so、uh, otherwise、uh, overwhelming.、Uh, because you know, I can't solve global warming, no individual can, no individual can stop this pandemic, right? But what This pandemic offers us is a kind of global warming that is taking place in just a couple of years, right? It is a problem that is massive, but it is taking place right now, and the impacts are very quick, and we must do something immediately or else people die. For global warming, bringing responsibility from this very specific thing of shopping or being responsible. To、uh, other people、uh, through trying to be、um, healthy and help other people、uh, stay healthy through the COVID crisis or behaving in ways that will help us solve global warming. What it asks consumers to do is shift from asking themselves when they consume, what do I want and what do I need, and then buy it, to a different question, which is, How do I balance what I want and I need with the needs of my family, my community, my country, and the world? And those are the same questions that will help us resolve COVID and will help us resolve global warming. It's that shift from this practice of consumption or voting or staying healthy or. Lowering our carbon footprint to balancing and considering all of these other levels、uh, in the process. Nihon Goni Yorisou という言葉があります
いろんな思いをですね、えー、いろんな人の立場になってこう考えてみようとエシカルコンシューマリズムというのは単なる消費者が変わるだけではなく学校も変わる企業もエシカルな企業になるそして自治体や政府もエシカルな、えー、政府行政機関に変わるということをこれをまさに実は日本でも実践していきたいと考えています。えー、あなたにパリのユネスコの会議であって以来、私はあなたに影響を受けて日本でもこのエシカルな活動をやることを決めました。で、今実はこの国際会議を開く徳島で実はエシカルな消費者を育てるために学校が動き、そして行政が動き、企業も動いて、そして、それぞれの立場の人たちが、エシカルデクラレーション、エシカル宣言をしている。これは世界でも珍しいことだと思います。で、この徳島に対して、そして、この徳島の動きをですね、日本中に広げたいと思っております。でそういう日本及び徳島に向けてのメッセージを、最後にジョンズ博士からいただければと思います。I guess I would just have one message、uh, to Japanese consumers and、uh, the people of Tokushima. And that is essentially, if you believe in democracy, you believe in ethical consumerism. It really is a system of information that you need to build. In order to make those effective ethical choices, it is a practice that you have to engage in every day and that needs to be brought to your home and your school and your workplace.、Um, but whether it's your money or whether it's voting in elections, there's really not that much difference. We are Dedicated to building a better world for all of us and for all of our children and our children's children. And to do that,、uh, we need to think about how we spend our dollars or yen or euros every day as just as important as how we、uh, vote. In elections,、um, or how we treat each other、uh, when we see each other. Thank you so much for having me. It has been an honor. どうもありがとうございました。えー、徳島、そして日本の消費者に向けたエジスさんの、えー、メッセージ。これはまさにポストコロナに対するエシカル消費の課題について。えー、その回答であったと思います、えー。今日はお忙しいところ、本当にありがとうございました。ありがとう。